Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Neltaras Mythic Plus Dungeon Guide for Season 4. Footage that you're going to see is from the PTR, so small changes are possible before this goes to the live servers. Keep in mind that the all famous chains that we used in Season 1 in this dungeon are changed, they do not damage the mobs anymore. They are spread out throughout the dungeon and right now only one player can click them, they stun all the mobs around them and increase the damage they take by 50% for 5 seconds, but that's it. So use them as often as you can as they're going to help you, but do not expect them to kill full packs of mobs as that happened in the previous iteration of this dungeon. You already saw the Wardens that put a nasty bleed on players, the other dangerous mob in that first area is the Trauma Mage. It will try to cast Molten Core if there are elementals around them, empowering them and if that happens you're probably going to wipe because they start doing a lot of damage. So keep interrupting that and heal through the single target channel spell if you don't have a CC or a stun for it. Also be careful with the Plunderers which cast those big fire swirlies on the ground, simply avoid them. And that will quickly get you to the first boss called Magma Tusk. He's going to fixate a player with a lava spray, a fronto, make sure that that player is the only one being hit by that ability. And he'll also spawn fire swirlies on the ground, make sure to dodge. For his next ability blazing charge he chooses a direction and start charging until he hits something, make sure you're not on the way and dodge the lava waves that come out of him after the impact. His last ability is Volatile Mutation which does a bunch of AoE damage and leaves a dot on everybody in your party. Defensives and healing cooldowns should be at hand here, but keep in mind that progressively the fight becomes harder as the boss gains stacks of damage, increasing the initial damage of the mutation, the duration of the dot after that and the amount of waves that spawn after the boss charges. So in short, the fight remains the same but the later stages are going to be much harder. After you kill the boss you run to the other wing where you're going to fight some hunters, they have a frontal cone on the ground that you need to dodge and they're going to jump on people and leave a nasty bleed, so be prepared to heal through that. They will also throw spears on the ground, brown swirlies that you need to avoid because they will stun you and do a lot of damage if they hit you. If you happen to pull some bone tenders make sure to interrupt their mending clay which is a heal. And this area also features a mini boss that does a big fiery circle of damage around it that you can interrupt and a bunch of fire swirlies that you can dodge. He's not that scary at all so it's very easy to put it on top of other mobs. The next boss is Chargat, he has a frontal that summons a magma wave that you need to dodge. And similar to the hunters before that he's going to jump at a player using his dragon strike and leave a nasty bleed on them that you simply have to heal through unless you have another way to get rid of it. His main ability is called grounding spear, he targets the 3 dps in your party with spears that they need to run out as they drop fire puddles on the ground and take a bunch of damage. And after that they remain connected to those spears with a chain. At the same time the boss casts fiery focus and enrages starting hitting your tank and spitting more swirlies on the ground. And in order to calm him down you have to run him through all three chains that are connecting the dps players to the spears. That stuns the boss, he takes increased damage for a few seconds and then everything starts over. Important note to make here is that you do not have to break all the chains at the same time as every chain broken leaves a 4 second debuff dot on every player in your party and this debuff is stacking. So ideally you wanna stagger the chain breaks and wait 4 seconds in between so your healer can keep up, especially on high tyrannical keys. After that boss you see several new mobs in the trash, the lava flares are small elementals that are going to keep casting melt at players, interrupt as many of these as you can. But definitely save an interrupt for mold of combustion if there is an iron torch in the pool, as it does a lot of damage to the target and leaves a nasty debuff that you can dispel. Those mobs also have a frontal that you need to dodge. While the bone spitters around them are going to throw dragon axes at players which leave a very nasty bleed that stacks and the only way to stop it is by stunning or CCing as it's not interruptible. There's also another mini boss here but this one you can skip by simply walking close to the wall. If you do pull it keep in mind that it does a lot of AoE damage and fiery circles that you need to spread with and heal through. And just before the next boss you have to fight some lava bearers who throw lava on the ground, simply dodge that. And beware of the blacksmiths who do AoE damage to your whole party and leave a nasty bleed on your tank. 
Forge Master Gorek is the third boss, he's occasionally going to jump into the middle, smack his anvil and do pulsing damage to everybody at your party. Be ready to heal through that and after that he's going to throw his shield at a target that bounces to two additional players. Each player hit takes a bunch of damage and summons swirlies on the ground that you need to avoid. After that he knocks back the tank, they need to run away quickly as he's going to jump after them and smash the ground. This is followed by a forge storm, a bunch of swirlies on the ground that you still need to dodge and then everything repeats with the boss jumping back in the anvil in the middle, doing the AoE and going through the sequence of actions until you eventually kill it. Two quick tips here, when he throws his shield you can try to position in a straight line which is going to make the dodging of the follow up swirlies much easier and also the tank can bait and get knocked back into the same spot on the ground every time to maximize the space that you have around the room. After the boss you run back down to the middle of the dungeon and you fight some wardens who have a frontal, make sure to dodge that. While the big blazewing birds are going to flap their wings, do a lot of AoE damage to everybody in your party and knock everybody back. On the way to the last boss you're also going to see some lava monsters interrupt as many of their bolts as you can. And once they shield themselves try to burst through the shield as quickly as possible so you can interrupt Molten Army. While they're casting this ability they'll keep summoning small mobs that can easily overwhelm you if you don't interrupt it quick enough. The last boss Warlord Sarga has a frontal so be ready to dodge that at all times. And he's going to follow it up with Molten Gulf which is a debuff that you cannot dispel, a dot that does a lot of damage to the targeted player so the healer should be ready to heal that up. He also summons an ad that fixates a player after leaving a fiery puddle on the ground, guided around possibly through the boss so you can cleave it down quickly. The boss also has a transmission phase that you need to prepare for by picking special abilities from the gold piles on the ground. Once you pick an ability you get a curse on you that lasts for 30 seconds which could be problematic if you don't have a curse dispel in your party. And once the boss casts magma shield you need to use 3 of these abilities on the shield to burst it down immediately. While the shield is active everybody is taking AoE damage and there is fire swirlies on the ground that you need to dodge. But once you break it the boss is stunned and takes extra damage for a few seconds. As for the abilities that you pick up, they vary, some of them are melee, some of them are range, some of them are target something on the ground and throw it. And I will link a weak aura in the description of this video which puts a notice on your screen to know which one you picked up. After you go through several phases like this one, the boss dies and the dungeon is complete. Feel free to check my channel for the rest of the Mythic Plus Dungeon Guides for Season 4 in Dragonflight. I'll see you guys there, now get out of here.